Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the mean and variance of a binomial distribution. Now if I have a random variable x which is distributed binomially where there are n trials and the probability of success is p then it can be shown that the mean is equal to n times p and the variance of the distribution I'll just write this in is n times p times q where q is 1 minus p q is often referred to as the probability of failure whereas p is the probability of success now there are different ways of writing the mean one way of writing the mean is to use the symbol mu another way is to say the expected value of x and we abbreviate that to e of x so all of these versions give the mean and that value is n times p similarly there's another version for writing the variance just write that in again here the variance, the symbol we use, is quite often sigma with the two up there, sigma squared. And some people write it as var x, the variance of x, like this. So expecting questions to see any of these notations used. I always think that the mean is an obvious result. I mean, for instance, suppose I had 40 items in a batch of 50. The probability that you get a 40 item was, say, 1 in 10, 1 tenth. Then I could say, let x be the random variable, number of 40 items in a batch of 50, where x follows a binomial distribution, 50 trials, probability of having that a 40 item is one tenth. So how many 40 items would I expect? Well, if one in 10 is 40 and I've got 50 items, I would have thought the answer was obviously going to be five. But you can see that follows this rule here because the mean number of 40 items would be E of X. What I would expect would be N times P. 50 times 1 tenth and 50 times 1 tenth is going to be equal to 5. So you can see that the mean seems to be an obvious result. So what you need to do is always remember essentially this result up here. So we just box that round okay like so. So do try and remember that. Now what I've got coming up now is a couple of examples where we use these ideas. So what I've done here is just recap that if x follows a binomial distribution NP then the mean is always NP and the variance is NPQ. Remember Q is always 1 minus P. So in the first example We've got here a normal six-sided fair die is thrown 24 times and the number of sixes scored is recorded. Find the mean and the variance. Well, this is a binomial distribution because you've got a finite number of trials, 24, and probabilities are independent. Probability of success, throwing a six always remains constant. So we have a binomial distribution. So I need to define a random variable before I start so I can say let x be the random variable. So we just write that in RV for short and it will be the number of sixes scored. And the number of sixes scored will follow a binomial distribution where we have 24 trials because you threw the die 24 times and the probability of success that is getting a 6 is 1 sixth. So if we're to find the mean 
then the mean is going to be equal to n times p. So n is 24 and p is 1 sixth. So 24 times 1 sixth. 24 times 1 sixth is going to be 4. So we would expect 4 sixes if you threw the die 24 times. As for the variance, let's just write that in, variance. Well, we know the variance is going to be equal to n times p times q. So n is 24, p is 1 sixth, and q will be 5 sixths, 1 minus 1 sixth. Okay? Work this out, and you have got 10 thirds. Okay, very easy question there. Now, here's another one. And what we've got here is that if x is a random variable, such that x follows a binomial distribution with two parameters n and p, and e of x is 12, and the variance of x is 3, find n and p. Well, we know that e of x is the mean, the expected value of x, and that's equal to 12. So what we know is that n times p equals 12. Let's call that equation 1. Now the other thing is that the variance of x is 3. So that means that npq for the variance must be equal to 3. And we'll call that equation 2. Now what I can do is substitute 1 into 2. So if I just write that down, that we sub... 1 into 2. What we would have is therefore 12 for NP, 12 times Q equals 3. So 12 times Q equals 3. So therefore if we divide both sides by 12, we have Q equals 3 twelfths. In other words, Q is equal to 1 quarter. Now that we have Q, we can work out p because since p equals 1 minus q, so then p must be equal to 1 minus q's value, a quarter. 1 minus a quarter is 3 quarters. Now that we have p, we can substitute this into number 1. So if we say sub in 1, we would have n times p, so that's n times 3 quarters, equals 12. So if I multiply both sides by 4, I get 3n equals 48. And if I divide both sides by 3, I have n equals 48 divided by 3, which is 16. So I have the value of n, which is 16, and the value of p now, which is 3 quarters. OK, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial and hopefully you've been able to follow the examples and apply them to any problem that you get.